Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome to another RP1 tutorial on this channel. Today I'm going to be going over the 3km downrange contract. I've seen a lot of people have trouble with this contract and I myself really struggled with this the first time that I ever played RP1. We're going to go in and we're going to build a rocket, nice and simple one that should hopefully achieve that contract. As with my going orbital video, I'm just going to show the science nodes that I have unlocked for this and it's very simple, just the start parts post-war material science and post-war rocketry testing. That is all we're going to need for the design that I'm going to do in this video. To begin with, we are going to grab an Aerobee telemetry unit because we do need one of those to be able to fly this rocket. Then we're going to grab a stringer structure procedural tank. We're going to change that to a smooth cone, peak number two, and we're going to match the diameters so that it matches that Aerobee telemetry unit. Next, we're going to change the tank type from steel to aluminium high pressure. That is why we picked up the material science technology node because steel tanks have a terrible dry mass. We want high pressure because the Aerobee engine that we will be using at the bottom of this stage does require a high pressure tank. So we're going to grab the Aerobee, place it on the bottom, and then we're going to upgrade it to the XASR config by pressing the engine button on the part action window. Then we're going to fill up those two high pressure tanks with the correct fuel for the Aerobee. Once that is done, we will grab a ring decoupler, place that on the bottom of the Aerobee, and begin working on the first stage. So in order to make this stage as aerodynamic as possible, we are going to be using two tanks. One is going to be conical at the top, and then we're going to use a bigger one, which will be the main tank for this stage. Once again, we are going to change the tank types for these tanks to the non-pressurized variant of the aluminium tank due to the fact that the RD101 engine that we will be using on the first stage does not require a high pressure fuel tank. High pressure fuel tanks weigh considerably more than their non-pressurized variants so this will save us on a bit of mass and of course get us some more crucial delta V. In order to achieve the 3000 kilometers downrange contract with an unguided rocket like this one you do need around 6000 meters per second of delta V. With those tanks molded it's time Time to grab the engine for the first stage. We're going to go for the RD100 series and like we did with the Aerobee, we're going to hit that engine on the part action window and upgrade this to the RD101. With the engine attached, we can once again go to the part action window and fill up the tanks with the correct fuel mixture for this engine. Now that that's done, it is time to add some fins to the bottom of this rocket so that they can provide a bit of aerodynamic stability. I like to have the overlays up for this just so I can make sure that the blue ball is underneath the yellow ball and we're going to have a good time. In order to mold the B9 procedural wings like I did just then, what we can do is we can hover over the wing, press B, G or T and then drag with the mouse and you can mold those wings exactly how you like them. Because this rocket is going to be unguided, we're going to utilize spin stabilization to maintain its course. In order to achieve this, we're going to turn off angle snap and rotate those fins ever so slightly. A tiny increment is all you need to achieve this. If you do this too drastically, the rocket will spin so violently that it will break itself apart. Now we've added launch clamps, the last step of this is to change the pitch of the entire rocket so that it should hopefully achieve that 3000 kilometers down range. This can take a little bit of time figuring out exactly the correct pitch in order to achieve this. But with that being done, that is the entire rocket finished. Now we are going to be launching this just so that I can demonstrate that this does achieve the contract. I've got MechJet flight recorder up on the left there because that is an accurate way of determining your downrange distance. So with this rocket, I have decided just to use procedural parts and RO engines due to the fact that if you have a very basic install of RO and RP1, you should be able to replicate this design quite easily. I will however also include a craft file for this design in the description of this video in case you don't want to design this yourself and you just want to grab a pre-made one, it will be in the description. The only thing you need to know about the launch of this rocket is you do need to hot stage to sufficiently ullage the second stage of this design. So once the first stage has about one second of burn time remaining, then you want to fire up the second stage engine Engine. And then once that has fully throttled up, then we want to decouple the second stage. But that's about it for this design. Very, very simple. That 3000 kilometers downrange contract is not as hard as it would initially appear. I haven't used avionics for this due to the fact that controllable rockets, early game RP1 are incredibly expensive and this would take a really long time to build up if we did want to have control over it. An unguided rocket really is the best rocket for the job. You can see we have easily surpassed that downrange milestone contract. And with that, that is it for this video. It's a very short one. I hope this has been helpful. And I've been Karnasa and I will see you later.